It is now time to look at our final assignment of the semester. And this is the one that's graded out of 10 points, not out of three points, and it's graded by full class critique, not by me, your instructor. So we're gonna scroll through on assignments, all of these things we've done already. All of these different skills, you know, spot illustration's a big one with digital inking, digital coloring, uh, type design, poster layout, digital painting, which we just finished, all the compositing and vector stuff, vector logos, GIF animations, creatures and landscapes, all of these, lands, um, the exercises, the cartoon jumbles, the, sh the shape emojis, all of those skills, you get to decide how you're going to use them. And this is what's called a full concept project. So the theme is going to be anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions. And I put a lot of kind of weird things here. I get in weird moods when I choose these themes and I find things that support them. Sometimes I find images. I think this is an important theme right now because we're seeing in the public discourse and art is always a reflection of, of what's going on in the world and our take on it, our own experience and trying to to communicate that and express that in some form that's useful to us and that hopefully is meaningful to others. But there's a lot of debates going on in the public sphere, even about things that were, we were talking about in the 1930s, like whether these books should be allowed to be taught in classrooms or these subjects. And everyone has different opinions, different experiences on it. But in general, I want us as a higher education class to define anti-censorship for ourselves, right? To see censorship as a negative thing. And so I'm not really looking for pro-censorship posters, right? But I am not saying what your viewpoint should be. I want you to actually really think about it and think what is censorship because censorship is in its own way a negative term, right? That's that something is being oppressed and withheld and kept out of um, the public discourse. And then I'm also throwing in promoting diverse opinions because what censorship in its negative form has been always used historically for lots of different ideologies is to silence other, other opinions, right? And censorship is really debatable because sometimes there are opinions that are just so damaging that you want to obliterate them from the public sphere. But, but being anti-censorship says that there's value even in just acknowledging everyone's viewpoints. So that, that's tough. So this isn't about seeing the world through rose-colored glasses. It's about kind of trying to understand these themes for yourself. They're complicated. And of course, they have to do with, with engaging with the world as we find it and using our own experiences to speak our own truth to it. So that's the theme, anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions. That can go in so many different ways. And what's tough is that you get to pick everything about this project. As long as it fits under that theme, you get to make an argument to your fellow students why your project explores that. And you're gonna do that with a, a one-page artist statement that goes with your work. So this is a past student example that wasn't exactly on that theme, but I think fits under that theme pretty well. And it's called, all you're gonna give in your artist statement is your name, the title of your work, and then whatever you wanna say about the ideas in it, right? It's not a research paper. It should not be more than a page. And it can be a lot less than a full page but it's called Karen versus the Masks of Tyranny. And we're gonna see in the example how this student who gave their permission uh, for it to be used, how it was thought about. But each of you is gonna do this very differently. So our final art project is gonna include an artist statement, and then it's gonna include your final print, you know, your final artwork. But you are going to sketch 
and learn the process for how to do this with our fourth proving ground. So proving ground four for creative problem solving is learning how to apply an iterative process. That's actually really a basic thing. It's just how to do something reliably over and over again to give you a better result. So in digital art for this final project, we're gonna do what's called the concept project workflow. And I've modified existing resources to illustrate it for you here. So concept is the art term for the idea. The only thing that you share for this assignment is that idea of anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions. That's the only thing in common. You need to define your own assignment, basically. You have to define your problem. In the design world, this is called a brief. You know, what is the problem you're trying to solve? So we're going to go through some ways that you can start to define your problem. What does censorship mean to you? How, what does promoting diverse opinions mean to you? What kind of imagery might relate to that? That's all defining your problem. Once you have defined your problem for yourself, given yourself your own assignment, then you're going to start brainstorming the kind of imagery, the kind of techniques that make the most sense, you know, are almost cliched examples for it, like a red bar that says censored. And then maybe what's anti that? Well, maybe a red bar across that that says cancel censorship, you know, that kind of thing. That's visual brainstorming. You can also just kind of write things out as brainstorming. After that, you're going to start collecting info. This is, we've been doing this all semester, finding inspiration, finding references. So you might have an idea of what you want, but you want to see what's out there and you, that's going to widen your, your toolbox. Then we're going to get to the, the actual creation process and collecting info and brainstorming will also come with its, come with some sketches that we're going to talk about. And then once, and you're going to get my input on this, you're not going to be working with e critiquing each other's ideas, but you're going to be working with me individually on your ideas at two different steps, starting with next class, going over your, your initial thumbnails. So once you, you have your final approach refined, you're going to start creating it. And it's totally up to you if you decide to use vectors, if you decide to use a tablet, digital painting, if you decide to composite, if you decide to do your own digital photography and then layer that together with a digital painting and then put text design on top of it, whatever it is, right? Then once it's finished, then you also have to think about how you're going to present it because this is going to be in our final class period. It's going to be up on the wall. Your one page, not more than a page artist statement is going to be next to it with your title, your name, and whatever you want to say about your, your idea. And then that's going to be judged by the class like it would in a gallery setting. So you want to start defining your problem, thinking of what the end product is going to be. And we can print in this lab up to 17 by 22 inches. The standard size for that is 16 by 20. You can get mats for that. You can get frames for that. We print on a paper that's $5. It's the Epson velvet paper. It's a really high-end rag content made to look like, like handmade watercolor paper. What's nice about it is it's heavy enough that you don't need to map that and it still looks like a professional presentation. It can still be submitted to our campus gallery for student shows just as is. So that's about the biggest that you can produce a really quality print in this lab. But what if your end product, when you're defining your problem, is a different kind of material, physical thing? <laughs> What if you wanted to do a cake, right? And your idea when you're setting up your problem is to show censorship, like how to have your cake and eat it too, is to promote ideas and still have your opinions. I don't know, I don't know what the idea is, but the end product you think it'd be really cool to have an image printed on a cake. And so then you wanna look at your local HEB or wherever you're gonna have a sheet cake printed and what the sizes are and what the pixel dimensions are. You want to think with the end product in mind. All right. So I'm just going to go through these steps really quickly in this video. This is what you need to do by next class. 
basically step zero, step one, and then after um, you've done step one, and you have these in next class, I'm going to be talking with you about these sketches, and then you can move on to skip steps two, three, and I'll be giving you a process critique along the, that way. All right, so step one, defining your problem. I want you to do this with writing. It will help you with your art statement. It doesn't need to be typed. This is just something I would just put in a sketchbook. But I want you to write a one sentence statement summary. I have a link here just talking about kind of the importance of, of this practice to summarize your idea. So that overall theme of anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions, that is not your one sentence summary. That's like an umbrella term, an umbrella theme that yours will fit within. So you have to do some kind of meditating on that and think, what is my take on this? And what do I want to use to show it? So when I think of censorship, I think of books being burned. And I think of Nazi Germany and fascist governments. Or I think of the Beatles. I'm a Beatles fan. And when they started burning Beatles albums after uh, John Lennon was misquoted as saying that the Beatles were bigger than Jesus, or it was quoted without the context, right? So maybe I want to do something with that. And I'm thinking, okay, I want my statement summary, my summary of my idea to have something to do with burning of media. So I might say in one sentence, I want to use imagery of book burning, books and media burning to showcase the destructive potential of censorship in the culture. That's a pretty straightforward sentence. This can be modified. Once you have that, though, that is a much more defined assignment than just to do something that fits the theme. So once I've said, okay, I want to use book burning cliches, I want to start acknowledging all the ways that's already been done and out there in the culture. So what this student did is uh, this past student wanted to use the imagery of memes and cancel culture and wanted to make fun of it. And you can see in his, in his statement, it's pretty um, forceful. <laughs> you know, so this was something that was important to him, something he felt strongly. It's always good to, to go with ideas that you feel strongly about. So find your take on anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions that is meaningful to you. And this is a college class. We are adults. So if your take is pro-censorship and anti-diverse opinions, then you want to own that and then work that as your take on it, right? You think this assignment theme should be censored. You know, show me that in your artwork. But it can start with a sentence. It will help clarify your thinking. And then it will help you understand what... Uh, what's already going on out there. So step one, after the foundational step of giving yourself your own assignment, right, is write down and or sketch what obvious imagery occurs to you immediately. So if I think of book burning, I think of flames, I think of bonfires, I think of Nazis, I think of um, the Beatles and big piles of albums being burned. I think of the Dixie Chicks after they criticized um, the invasion of, of Iraq. Things like that, kind of the, the origins of what we call council culture now. And then I also think of school boards, you know, banning books from, from public school curriculums, which is meaningful to me personally. So this should relate to your own experience. So for this student, what they thought of when they were thinking about the memes and cancel culture, they thought of Karens, they th thought of something called butterfly memes that were going on at the time. Uh, they thought of a lot about COVID deniers online and anti-maskers and misinformation and especially conspiracy theories with like the 5G network and getting chipped and all of that. So then the next step of brainstorming is to draw at least three rough thumbnail sketches like we did for our logos way back when 
But here, these are ones that try to solve the problem. 